and it is extremely rare to have a Supreme Court draft leaked. Yeah, they're calling it unprecedented. To talk more mm -hmm. about that, we're joined live now by Professor Leslie Gilo Jacobs with the McGeorge School of Law. Thank you, Leslie, for, for being with us uh, this afternoon. We appreciate it. Happy to be here. Good to have you. How rare exactly? We're saying unprecedented, so I'm assuming this has never happened before. And again, when's the last time something, something similar to this happened? I'm not aware of uh, a draft being leaked of this importance um, prior to the opinion. It's uh, it being issued. It's it is unprecedented. Uh, we're sw I, I served as a law clerk um, on the Supreme Court, and it's just taken for granted that um, confidentiality is w what you go by. Well, and what kind of precedent does this set moving forward now? Well, I don't know if it sets a precedent uh, at all. Uh, I mean, it, certainly anybody is looking at the reaction to this and, and thinking that uh, people are saying that it's, it's not okay to do this as a general matter. And I guess, you know, I, I interviewed Congressman LaMalfa earlier today and he brought up, what does this do for the trust of the group? They need to be able to feel like they can have open dialogue and have trust and right. that it's not going to get leaked. Does that, what do you think about that? Well, I think that's true. I also have to say that we're not sure who did this leaking. Right? People seem to assume it's a law clerk or uh, could possibly be one of the justices, um, but there are administrative assistants, there are IT people, and in this day of hacking into computers, who knows uh, who uh, possibly gets access to these things. So yes, it, it destroys trust um, and it, it will make the justices more cautious, but yes, it, I mean, in that sense, it's a problem. Professor Jacobs, what do you think this could mean for the, the future of the Supreme Court? I know you don't have a crystal ball, but how could this, how do you foresee this could change things for the, the highest court? Are you talking about the leak changing things or are you talking about the opinion? Uh, I'm talking about the leak, the yeah. leak itself and, and how that could change, I guess, how, how business is done. Yeah. I mean, you've never been on the Supreme Court, but you've been in a similar position and you know how they function behind closed doors. How do you see it changing those elements? Well, you know, I was back in the day, they didn't have email, but uh, I assume that they will have more security measures. I assume they will be um, having talks about uh, confidentiality, uh, but there's limits uh, to how much you can stop people from doing this type of thing. Well, how many people would even have access to this? Well, as I said, it's going to go uh, law clerks, uh, um, justices, mm -hmm. administrative assistants. I mean, you know, did somebody print out a draft and it's in the trash? I mean, who did somebody take it home and somebody, you know, to work on it? You and mentioned then there's IT staff. Got it? IT staff there. I mean, that mm -hmm. just opens up a whole different can of worms. Not that mm -hmm. IT people can't be trusted, but they're not necessarily part of the actual judicial process. Their support by nature. We just so. don't know who, who could have done it. You take your computer home, if somebody else knows your password in the household, I, it just, we don't know. Mm -hmm. And also, quite frankly, it's just interesting to think of the motivation for releasing this because people right. seem to assume that it's people who are opposed to the opinion, but I can't think of a strategic reason why somebody would do that. It's yeah. not helpful. Um, it, it seems like what this is going to do is solidify the position of the people who have voted for this opinion. But don't you think there um, might? So, but don't, there are some. There's some folks saying that it's because they were hoping to hold this in the, the court of public opinion before the actual opinion uh, by the court, and that it might put pressure on justices, the, the conservative justices, to vote the other way in face of that pressure. I, I've heard that argument thrown out there. Does that make sense to you? Does that make sense that conservative justices would hear public opinion and then say, oh gosh, I'll change my vote? Um, I, I just don't that think that makes sense. Um, I, I think it, it could equally make sense that somebody was hoping to solidify the votes of the conservative justices who said they were gonna go along with the opinion, but you need those five votes. You need these little letters that say, I join um, to, to circulate in the chamber. So I, I don't think we know who did it or why. All right, Professor Jacobs, thanks so much for your time and your Happy insight. Happy to be we with you. We appreciate it, thank you.